You are now listening to the Visit El Paso podcast, official podcast of Destination El Paso. I'm your host, Christy Couture, and this is episode 12, the History Vault for April 2014. Hey, thanks for listening to the Visit El Paso podcast. You're listening to the second installment of our History Vault episodes, which are released every month after our regular events and music show. Now, the goal of this particular series is to give you some additional insight to the interesting past of El Paso and show you the amazing heritage and living history that you can find here. In this episode, we'll be chatting with Michael Lewis, a brilliant member of the El Paso community who's currently a commissioner on the El Paso County Historical Commission, a docent at the El Paso Museum of History, and a master naturalist. Michael will be telling us the story of the first Thanksgiving, which happened exactly 416 years ago today on April 30th, 1598. That's right, the first Thanksgiving actually happened here in Paso del Norte. To be precise, it happened in San Elizario, and that's actually 22 years before the Pilgrim's Feast in Massachusetts. Uh, my name is Michael Lewis, and I am a commissioner on the El Paso County Historical Commission, and I'm also vice president of the El Paso Mission Trail Association, uh, amongst many other things that I'm involved with around the community. But uh, as far as the history of the of the Mission Trail and the history of the first Thanksgiving, um, those are probably the most uh, pertinent <laughs> things that I do. Wow, that's great! And how long have you been uh, into history in this uh, at this level? You know, I started, uh, I moved back to El Paso about seven years ago, and uh, when I did history wherever I've been, and uh, one of the things that I did when I came back here was I became involved as a docent at the uh, El Paso Museum of History downtown, and uh, as I began, you know, volunteering there and leading tours of the galleries at the History Museum, I started wanting to know more about the stuff that I was explaining to people visiting El Paso. Uh, so I just started reading. I'm a voracious reader. I pretty much read anything I can get my hands on. And uh, as I read more and more about um, our our mission trail, um, I started realizing how really unique and special they are. Um, they're the oldest active missions in Texas. Um, they're about 100 years older than the missions in San Antonio. They're uh, about 150 years older than the missions in California. And uh, wow. but and they're active, vibrant parishes too. I mean, they're, 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 the parishioners are, or the, the community there is so large that they can't even have mass in the missions most Sundays. They have to have mass next door in larger facilities. So um, it's it's uh, so just understanding, you know, how how do we get these missions? Where do they come from? And um, I think helps me understand more and helps me relate their so their specialness and their uniqueness to, to visitors and even to people who've lived here all their lives too. Definitely. I agree. The the missions are certainly unique and, and they add a whole lot of culture to our region. And I know one of the uh, upcoming celebrations and one of the annual celebrations that uh, the Mission Trail celebrates is the first Thanksgiving. Yeah, which, you know, to anybody outside of the El Paso region might be a little confused to hear about that. So can you give us a brief overview of, of what is the first Thanksgiving? <laughs> sure. We uh, we claim to have the, the, been the site of the, the of the nation's first Thanksgiving in 1598. This was um, about two decades before uh, the Pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock in Massachusetts. And uh, on one hand, as a historian, I mean, it, we, we get nervous whenever we start using superlatives like first and best and biggest and things like that. Um, mm-hmm. But at the very least, we can say it was certainly the very first Thanksgiving in this region. And by this region, I mean pretty much within a 500-mile uh, radius of here. Um, what happened was uh, Don Juan de Oñate was uh, given the contract to uh, become the conquistador of New Mexico, Nuevo Mexico. And this was the northern territories of what was then New Spain, um, what we now know as the areas of um, West Texas, uh, New Mexico, and, um, and Arizona, oh, eastern Arizona. And uh, he was given this as uh, 
you know, take a, take a whole bunch of people and and colonize this area and claim it as claim it for the king of Spain and colonize it. Um, so he left uh, Mexico. He left uh, north of Mexico City. He was from Zacatecas, which is north of Mexico City, uh, and he. Uh, brought together a ginormous group. I mean, that was one of the first things I was surprised about was how big this group was. I was just thinking, you know, maybe, I don't know, 20, 100 people? No, no. Mm-hmm. It was hundreds of people, women, children, um, thousands of uh, head of cattle, and uh, this ginormous caravan started moving their way north, and um, and they kind of knew where they were going. Uh, previous expeditions had, had been uh, up in this area before they did not settle here they were just there as explorers so they knew kind of sort of where they were going they knew that there was a river somewhere around here uh, and a fairly large one so that's what they were headed for they were headed for this river and it was in april of uh of 1598 uh they had they were in between chihuahua and present day uh ciudad juarez uh south of the um the mountains south of what is uh, the Samalayuca Mountains, mm-hmm. and um, they—it uh, was kind of miserable. I mean, they—they—they <laughs> they, they, they got rained on for like a couple of days, so they're wet. Their their clothes are sticking to them, and uh, they're—they're—it's just a, not a happy scene. Um, they found some water at a couple. You know, at, at one point, you know, the the downpour was so much that they were able to that there was puddles everywhere, and they were able to let loose the livestock to to drink the water. Uh, but then they ran out of water. They ran out of, of the pools. They ran out of springs. And for several days, um, they had no water except for whatever they had. And uh, all of this is described in this epic poem uh, by uh, one of Oñate's soldiers, a, a captain by the name of Gaspar Perez de Viagra. And uh, he became... The, the chronicler of the of the whole expedition, uh, but he did it in, a, in an epic poem style. So it, it's almost like the Iliad or the Odyssey um, or Beowulf, you know. So it's this kind of flowery language, and uh, and uh, I was reading it uh, this weekend, and, and just kind of like going, oh brother, you know, this guy really knows how to turn a phrase. But you know, his point was to to, to romanticize this journey and to to make it sound, uh, you know, that, like they're 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 what they did was you know, really noble, really royal. Um, so anyway, so uh, Viagra describes that their, their saliva was as thick as pitch as they were, you know, struggling through this desert uh, south uh, southeast of Juarez. And um, then they get stuck in the Samalayuca sand dunes. And uh, for for people uh, not familiar with the geography south of Juarez, there's a huge sand dunes area, um, kind of similar to white sands, except it's not white. And so imagine thousands of of, of of livestock and hundreds of people and hundreds of ox carts trying to get through white sands and all those dunes. Oh. And that's what it was like as they're trying to get through um, this area southeast uh, of what is. Well, they had sent scouts ahead, and the scouts found the river. They found the river, and um, uh, Viagra says that it was on the 20th, uh, on the 20th of April, 1598, is when the scouts found the river. And the, the area that they found was uh, pretty much in present, near present-day San Elisario, Texas, and uh, kind of in between San Elisario and Socorro, Texas, right along uh, the present-day river. Actually, it was the, the, the river was north of where it is today. Uh, the river was actually kind of near where I-10 uh, runs today. So this area that they found um, was actually in present-day United States, so where they located the river. Um, the river back then was very marshy in that area of what we call now the, the Mission Valley. Um, mm-hmm. So pretty swampy, you know, it, it wasn't like it is today. We we actually have preserved a little piece of that kind of marshy existence, that wetlands existence in mm-hmm. uh, Rio Bosque Park, which is yes. uh, the very, very southern, southeasternmost part of El Paso, the city of El Paso. Um and uh, so they arrived on the 20th. Everyone else kind of finally, you know, made their way the, uh, the, the, of this caravan. And then on April 30th, it was Ascension Thursday, um, they, uh, Viagra describes they had a big, huge celebration. Uh, on one hand, um, 
Oñate formally took possession of the land of New Mexico for, in, on behalf of the King of Spain in, in what's called La Toma, or the taking. And uh, they had a huge fiesta, a huge sum. And, I mean, think, think of these people as they've gone through the desert for, you know, many, many days. It's been very, very um, uh, dry. It's, you know, they've been parched. They reached the Rio Grande. It's spring, so it's swollen. It's got all the snow melt, all this water in it. They are just elated. Um, Viagra even describes that. Uh, two of the oxen and, and a couple of the horses were so uh, drank so much water that they burst. That, that they were just <laughs> just gorging themselves. <laughs> yeah. So um, so they're so ex- they're so thrilled. They're so excited, and um, and they're also so thankful that they've got not only water but now they've basically just claimed a whole brand new province for the king of Spain. So they created a, a chapel, a chapel, and the, there were some uh, trees down there, some willows, and they created a chapel, a church within this, you know, kind of mini forest of, of trees, and they celebrated a mass of Thanksgiving. And uh, for Catholics, every mass is a, a Thanksgiving, uh, but this one in particular was designated to be uh, in Thanksgiving for for the water, for the riches that they came upon as far as, you know, uh, there was things growing there that they were able to eat. Um, and so they were, they were, they had a, they had a Thanksgiving. So this was on April 30th, 1598. And like I said, that was, uh, I think 23 years before, uh, Plymouth Rock and the Pilgrims of Plymouth Rock. So that's where we say we had this first Thanksgiving. And Viagra's description of this wasn't the only one. Um, another, an unnamed priest, uh, also wrote an itinerary of, um, of basically the whole year of that expedition. Uh, one of the Franciscans who, missionaries who accompanied Oñate. And he also wrote of, you know, not as flowery, but he also explained pretty much the same thing. You know, that they arrived on the banks of the Rio Grande, of what it, well, the Rio del Norte is what they called it then. Um, they arrived at the banks of the Rio del Norte on the 30th, uh, on the 20th of April, 1598, and then they celebrated this massive Thanksgiving and a fiesta and a play. Um, that was the other thing that both accounts mention, that another captain um, put together, wrote a play, a comedy, that they performed during this fiesta. Um, and we, we're pretty sure uh, that that was the very first literary work composed in the United States. What is now the United States, and uh, certainly the first uh, the first comedy um, I think uh, <laughs> in the Southwest, if not yeah. in, in the entirety of the United States. So um, so it's based on all of that, on all of that description that um, in uh, about 25 years ago, um, a man by the name of Sheldon Hall uh, kind of started doing this research too and uh, realized that this was all happening in El Paso's backyard, or this is all happening in El Paso's backyard um, 400 years earlier. And uh, so he put together the Mission Trail Association and the very first First Thanksgiving celebration. And we've been trying to celebrate that every every year since uh, by doing a reenactment, our own play, and uh, by doing a reenactment of, of what happened that's based on Viagra's uh, account as well as um, the, the very little information we have from that itinerary from that unnamed priest. And um and you know, and celebrate that this is part of our heritage. This you know, this is something that that, that certainly happened here uh, that we should be proud of and that we should recognize as the, the very beginnings of both uh the southwest United States uh, as well as our own community here on the border. And um so Nyati's crew, uh, you know, the people they stayed there for uh, a couple of days and then on May fourth uh, they made their way up to what is now present-day El Paso, and they actually crossed the river there. And they named that location El Paso del Norte, the pass or the ford to the north. They actually That was the only place along the river, uh, and the Indians that they encountered actually were the ones who told them this is the best place to cross. So remember, that whole area of what is now known as the Mission Valley, very marshy, um, very swampy. Uh, but where the two mountain ranges connect, what we now call the Franklin Mountains and the Sierra de Juarez, that was the best place to actually cross the river without getting your 
carts stuck in the mud and everything else. So it was on May 4th, uh, 1598, they actually crossed the river, named the location El Paso del Norte, and it's been called that ever since. <laughs> that is amazing. And it's an absolutely fantastic tale. Uh, it seems like it's well documented. You know, it's hard to see where there would be any um, dispute or any uh, myths kind of surrounding it, especially if, you know, there's different accounts of the same uh, time in in in, uh, in history. Uh, what are some of the the myths that sort of surround the first Thanksgiving? I know that there's been um, some different uh, opinions about it lately. Yeah, and I think you know part of that has been um, I think on one hand it's just been people not really. Um, cognizant of the, the fullness of the history that's there and the sources that document it. Um, the, you know, like I said before, whenever you start saying things and um, and what we can definitely say was the, it's our first Thanksgiving. Uh, we can say it definitely happened before Plymouth Rock. We can say um, it definitely happened, um, you know, before other uh, you know, explorers may have had similar masses of Thanksgiving as they were exploring other parts of uh, the Spanish Southwest. Or, you know, the French missionaries were in the northern part of what is today the United States. Um, but, you know, as far as, you know, when we think of what a, what the a Thanksgiving celebration is, you know, you, you not only have some sort of uh, spiritual context, in our case it was uh, a mass, uh, but you also had a feast. You know, you were celebrating the riches of the earth, the bounty that is here. Uh, that certainly happened here. Um, you know, in, 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 there's mention of the Indians um, and uh, being around, and my guess is that there was certainly Indians that probably came around going, like, what's going on here? Uh, the mm -hmm. Indians that Viagra mentions that they encountered in this area were were peaceful. Again, they had, they had seen Spanish explorers before. They weren't the very first ones. And actually, Viagra mentions that uh, the Indians greeted them with the sign of the cross. They made the sign of the cross with their thumb and forefinger. Um, and uh, they actually knew a little Spanish. They said the first words that they said to Anyate's uh, people, soldiers, were manso, manso, well, peace. We come in peace. Uh, so that's why they named those Indians the Manso Indians. Um, mm -hmm. So you, we figured that you know, all the components of what we traditionally associate with the first Thanksgiving uh, in Plymouth Rock in the northeast United States, you know, Indians, pilgrims, uh, we, people from the Europe, people indigenous to the Americas, um, a big feast, uh, a spiritual Thanksgiving to God, all of these things were present and accounted for in our celebration. And uh, and since we can say it, we, we know it happened years before um, what happened at Plymouth Rock, that's kind of where our claim comes from. Now, you're right. Some other people re very recently have have, uh, have said, you know, have called it into question. And I think it really boils down to, uh, you know, a thing of marketing. Um, you know, w there's a lot of history in our region, and there's really a lot of things that we can um, – celebrate in our history yeah. and you know we should be thankful that we do have this embarrassment of riches for history and there's no one thing that defines El Paso or any of the communities here in this region um, the first Thanksgiving is only one of many things that happen in San Elisario or the region of, uh, of San Elisario uh, it's the, certainly the thing that the Mission Trail Association has tried to uh, foster awareness of and, and celebrating but it's certainly not the only thing and the only reason why people should go visit San Elisario. I mean, uh, the chapel there uh, was built years after this first Thanksgiving that we're talking about, but that chapel is uh, is a pretty amazing uh, structure and a, a testament to uh, not only the missions of the Mission Trail, but also, I mean, that chapel was built as a garrison chapel for the first Spanish fort in that area. Um, and that's worth celebrating, too. So, in other words, you know, there's a lot to celebrate. There's a lot of weeks in the year to celebrate. This year will be the 416th anniversary of that. Sounds great. And, yes, I completely agree with you. Uh, not only San Elizario, but the entire Mission Trail is truly just a vibrant mix of culture. Mm -hmm. And thank you for giving us this, this very thorough overview of the first Thanksgiving. It's, it's certainly interesting and
I hope that our listeners look into it a little more. Oh, certainly, yeah. We you know, we have a website, the Mission Trail Association. It's uh, El Paso Mission Trail dot org. And okay. um it's uh we're, it's a cliche but it's under construction right now. Um we're working well all of our we're kinda of focused right now on making sure that the, the first Thanksgiving thing celebration is, is, is great. So uh we're kind of postponed working on our website until after that. But um uh, it will be a place where people can uh send us emails and if they've got questions about the events that are going on. We we do encourage people to visit. We we do have a Mission Trail Visitor Center. It's in the uh, Mission Valley Transit Center at the corner of Zaragoza Road and Alameda Avenue, uh, just catty corner from the Isleta Mission. And um, we're open every day uh, for people to come in, visitors to come in and get an overview of where the missions are, how to get to them, and uh, the history behind there. Um, I was just there this weekend and gave a tour to um, some folks from Fort Bliss. And um, along the way, we we, uh, we, we gathered uh, a couple visiting from West Virginia. So they didn't know uh, the history of it, so they were really intrigued. And, and, and as we were explaining it, they said, you know, all, nobody's going to believe this when we tell them back home, but <laughs> we're going to tell them when we get back home. <laughs> So uh so I thought that was a, that was pretty cool and uh and uh so we encourage people you know to 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 do to visit and and you know a lot of things we or a lot of the times we hear people saying you know I've lived in El Paso all my life I didn't even know this was here and um so for both visitors from outside of El Paso and from visitors within El Paso uh we hope that they come out and and experience uh, these uh, amazing living representations of our of our area's history. Well, thank you so much again, uh, Michael, for interviewing with us and, and telling us about the history of the Toma. Great. Thanks a lot. I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for tuning in to the Visit El Paso Podcast History Vault. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast on SoundCloud, MixCloud, iTunes, and Stitcher Radio. And stay tuned for our May episode featuring the Can't Miss Events for the Month, an interview with Zach Paul, one of the organizers of the Neon Desert Music Festival, and music from a local band. As always, you can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Flickr, Pinterest, Vine, and more. Let us know what you'd like to hear about in any of our upcoming episodes by emailing me at socialmedia at destinationelpaso.com.